Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. One of the things that we have seen from this scripture, first of all, is that there are two kinds of people that you meet sometimes. You have the people who are wanting and the people that are waiting. Mm. Just because they start, both words start with W doesn't mean they are doing the same thing. There are people who are wanting from God but are not waiting on God. So some persons can be wanting. A lot of us want the harvest but they are not willing to go through the process. And product comes from process. So many persons just want, they want, they, all they want is want. If you check through your prayer points, you can tell that all you want from that relationship is not necessarily a relationship. Because you just want, but you're not willing to wait. So waiting, people who wait are very few. But people who want are very many. And it takes waiting to activate God's presence. And let me tell you something. One of the things that you also realize from this scripture, scripture says even the youth shall faint and will be weary. So it's okay for you to faint. It's okay for you to lose strength. It's okay for you to be weary. Young men shall utterly fall. We saw it from the drama. So it's okay for you to fall. It's okay sometimes you don't have the strength to, to stick with your values. It's, it is scripture right here. It says, but those who wait on the Lord, one of the things I drew out from this scripture is that there are people who are waiting on others but not God. True. Because you can be waiting doesn't mean you are waiting on God. Mm -hmm. And can I also tell you something? Waiting doesn't have to do with sitting because everybody can sit but not everyone is waiting. True. It's not a posture, it's a position of the heart. Mm. Because you can sit and you're not waiting. Not everyone who is sitting is fixed on this program, I can assure you. <laughs> Some people are thinking of Theophilus. <laughs> Some people are thinking of their crush. <laughs> Some people are thinking of their uncle. You know very well, especially for students, that when you are praying for your school fees, you know that you are actually not depending on God. There is an uncle you are depending on. Mm. But you forget so soon that it takes God to tune the heart of that uncle to favor you. Yeah. So it's not about sitting. It's not even about how you shout in the place of prayer. Because you can shout, but your heart is not well positioned to receive from the one you are waiting on. True. So it says, but those who wait on the Lord. So the question we should ask you tonight is, who are you, who are waiting, you waiting on? on? Ask your neighbor, who are you waiting mm. on? But those who wait on him, True. Because you can be calm, doesn't mean you are calm with God. Mm. Because it says, be still and know. But who are you still on? Who are you waiting on? That's the question. But those who wait on the Lord. So I can be waiting on my next neighbor. I can be waiting on someone. I can be waiting on the vehicle, on the traffic to move, not necessarily the traffic light. So the person in front can be making a mistake, but because I'm waiting on him, I'm following him, mm. not necessarily following God. So the question tonight we need to ask ourselves is that when you are quiet, is your heart really quiet? People say, I get distracted during the place of prayer. People say, oh, I, get, I have realized that many times it's not necessarily the noise around you that makes you distracted. The noise of your mind can make you distracted. That's true. That's how I know that you can be silent on the outside, but not silent on the inside. And it takes silence on the inside to make you ensure that you are waiting on God. Because God needs silence. So, if we look at this scripture very closely, Isaiah 40 verse 31, many a times I like to read scriptures from, from the last line, then upwards. Amen? He said... But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings as what? Eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So if I'm fainting in the place of my work, if I'm running and I'm always weary, if I can't mount up the wings like ego, if I cannot renew one man. Amen? If there was one man that changed the face of my ministry. Therefore, you started waiting for one man that will change the face of your ministry and not God. So who are you waiting on? The reason why a lot of Christians easily give up. You know, a lot of people, they complain. They say, ah, God has left me. God has forsaken me. God has... No, before you start complaining, I start... some of you give God a deadline. God, if you do not bless me before October, eh, I swear... You are swearing to God. I swear, if I serve you again, 
check you yourself. Are you truly waiting mm. on God? Mm. Because waiting is an art position. Mm. It's not what you say in your mouth. I love you, I love you. It's not in mouth. Oh. It's from art. We know if you truly love somebody. Mm. Am I talking to somebody? So are we truly waiters in our generation? Mm. We are truly not waiting our generation. Every one of us, every one of us, we're in the hurry. Talk to the average person now. Hey, God, I want to make it. I want to make it. I want to make it. I want to. I want to blow and uh, I want to trend. You know, we want to trend. Mm. So we look at for what is raining so that we'll join the bad wagon. Mm. Need uh, um, technical. Can you please help me with this mic? We look out for what is trending because we want to join the bandwagon. And God says, wait on me concerning your vision, concerning your career, concerning your ministry. You will see me. But many a times we look at trends because we can't wait. It's a fast generation. Fast food, fast flight, fast church. You know it's fast church now. In those days, our churches was, you will start by 6 in the morning, you will close 4 in, at, in the evening. The God save if it is Thanksgiving. God save if it is, just, is where you are too close. God save if it is Thanksgiving. They will call men, call women, call boys, call teenager, call... Ah. But now it's not so, it's a first generation. Go to church one hour, you are done. We're making user friendly. Amen? Everything is fast. And if you are not careful, when you are walking with God, you will start taking the concept of the world to now start walking with God when he says, wait on me. God calls you to me and says, wait on me. I want to make you a pastor. I want to make you an evangelist. You now see that in this generation, it is apostle that is reigning. It is apostle. The people that are making it is apostle. <laughs> then all of a sudden, you change your call to become apostle that God did not call you for, but because you are moving with trend. Are we truly waiters? The reason why you have not truly seen God is because you are not waiting. If you wait, many of us are under pressure. I'm telling you. Many years ago, we bought a car. They call it Voltron. How many of you know Voltron? We bought that car. We just changed one car to buy Voltron. When Voltron was rainy that time, a senior man of God saw the car and said, oh. He says, now your ministry has started. What has been happening to my ministry all these years? Why will a car be the endorsement of the fact that ministry has started? So, because we now see people driving, he said the, the pressure is real. Are we together? You go on the internet and somebody snaps on private jet, a man of God. He snaps on private jet and says, grace at work. You who cannot, who flies keke, something tells you that grace is not working for you. Because we have wrongly defined the work of the Spirit. We have taken it to mammon and materialism. Am I talking to somebody? So you put... People are under pressure in Christianity because Christianity has been wrongly defined in our generation. That it is car. It is mama. They are good. God has blessed us. I have car. So he said, this one, is because he doesn't have car. That's why. No. But you see, the Bible says, seek it first. The car by private jet is an error that we have seen in our generation. After I finished doing it as a man of God, my, my get mad, the young boys in our church, they say, pastor is an epitome of grace, not Jesus anymore. Am I talking to somebody? It is Jesus that is grace. It's not private jets. 
So young men, they are under pressure because they want to succeed. I want to succeed. I want to succeed. You see our young men, everybody wants to succeed. Start cheating, doing yahoo, do all manner of things because the pressure of evil is in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a revival that is coming to the body of Christ. Amen. There is a true revival that is coming to the body of Christ. Men who genuinely carry the presence of God and they don't care. I checked through the scripture, I realized that <laughs> any man who truly carried the presence of God, even in the pits, the Bible says, consigning Joseph, Joseph yeah. in the pits, the Bible says, and God was with him. I realized that the best place God can be with you is your lowest moment. And God was with him. Somebody say, I am a carrier of his presence. For God is with me. So it's very important that we begin to define some things in our generation. True. No wonder Apostle Paul says, I die daily. Because if you're not conscious of dying daily to your flesh, you will know unconsciously when mammon has eaten up. True. You will know unconsciously the things that you have begun to crave for, you begin to crave for daily. Mm. And that's why it's very important that we must pray a particular prayer every day that, Lord, may you forge me of excesses. Yeah. Because you will know, because the truth is there's pressure. I just imagine Joseph in Potiphar's wife's room. I'm sure that thoughts were flying up in his heart for his eye to stay on. He decided to press. He could have just had it and wiped his mouth and everything would be fine. But he decided to stay on God. Because you see, sometimes staying on him may not be easy. Staying on him may not look like you are trendy. But let me tell you something. When you stay on the truth, which is Jesus, the truth trends. It takes time. Yeah. Truth trends. You may not be training and it's fine. But when you stay through the process, it may take time. But truth trends. True. Coming with all the things, the people around cheering you up, singing wedding songs, and you're marching to the altar. We need to get to a point where we go beyond the wedding ceremony, the whole celebration, the jollof fries, the everything, and then have a marriage ceremony with God. So marriage is, you are not looking for the harvest. You are staying. While the harvest comes or not, you are there. And that's what marriage ceremony with my husband, I get the benefits that comes with staying with mm. him. So, but many of us, many times, we want to seek the product of his presence rather than, than the presence. And the more you stay in his presence, the more the products come. There yeah. are always products, but there are no conditions to waiting. That's the truth. Those that wait upon the Lord, the first thing that happens is that their strength is renewed. Yeah. You see, when the Bible says strength is renewed, it means there is a revival. Mm. There is a supernatural empowerment that happens. You begin, people begin to ask you, oh, but you are feeble now. You are weak. How do you do the things that you do? You cannot explain it. Because you see, there are things that happen that God picks you up from. There are things that happen to you. There are assignments he gives to you when you wait on him. There are instructions he gives to you. Then everybody around you begins to wonder, ah, ah, how come you are able to do this? Because let me tell you something. When you wait on him, there is a, a kind of power that comes upon you. You don't struggle. Even when it looks like you are fragile, you see yourself in your fragility. You see yourself in your feebleness. You are moving. Even though physically you can't find your strength, but inside there's a strength that is coming on your inside. There's a strength that wells up on your inside. That's what happens when you wait on God. You mount up like we, as wings, like wings as eagles. Eagles have speed. If you research about eagles, you realize that the flight an eagle uses, the way they fly, can almost be compared to the way aeroplane flies. Mm. So speed comes upon you when you wait. But many a times we are not patient to wait. And then the last thing that happens when you wait is what? The last thing that happens when you wait is what? Is what? There are three things there. It says they shall run, month of wings, that they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not, not faint. faint. Have you ever started something and then whilst you are moving, you don't just feel tired. Mm. You can't understand it. There are reasons why you should be tired. People ask you, why do they get this strength? How do you do it? Well, you just find yourself moving. You are not weary. You find yourself moving. Even when you look at your account, it doesn't make sense. Because the things of God don't make sense, but they make miracles. So you just look and you're like, what's going on? But you just find yourself moving because you are a waiter. Mm. No waiter. You can never waste on God waiting on God. Yeah. But can you wait? That's the question tonight. Can you wait on God? Characteristics of a waiter. Characteristics of a waiter. 
Number one, men who wait on God don't change their menu for anything. Men who wait on God don't change their menu for anything. anything. Hmm. It's as simple as the analogy of um, you going to a restaurant hmm. to buy food. Maybe you go to Matai's where they say ice cream, right? And um, when you get to Matai's, you meet the waiter and you tell them that you want ice cream. They have their menu, right? Am I talking to somebody? They have the things that they sell in Matai's. You know, you start telling them, do you have ice cream? They tell you yes. Do you have a meat pie? They tell you yes. Do you have, um, what do you put by in Matai's? Donuts. Chicken and chips. Chicken and chips. They tell you yes. And all of a sudden, you ask them, do you have amala? A way to soup and everything. They say, you came to mat eyes. We can only offer you snacks. I tell the waiter, please, I, need, I am hungry now. Give me what I want. The waiter will carry his menu and show you and say, this is all we sell. True or false? True. We can't give you what you are asking for because we don't sell it here. Mm. You now ask for aku. We don't see aku here. Don't you see the fine people that come to our restaurant? It's for you can go to Mama Put to go and buy. Listen, a true waiter will not change his menu for you. Mm. He will advise you to go outside and go and buy somewhere else. It will not say because of profit that it needs to make. It will not say, sit down. We are going to make provision for what you want. The moment you begin to change your menu in business, what happens is that you start losing identity. Hmm. The reason why I say matter is because you know them for ice cream. They have stood by it. Come song, come rain. This is what we are known for. And they have refused to change it. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, in this kingdom, what are you known for? What is your menu? What has God told you concerning your life and ministry that you cannot change for anything? You see some lady and say, ah, I want to marry a firebrand man of God. Firebrand. Tongue talking. And one tongue talking brother comes to you that speaks Christianese. You know what Christianese is? Thou art holy, my dear sister. His brother speaks Christianese. He comes to you. And you have your menu. And the guy comes. I told you, I said, you see, I got a car out of the house. I'm ready to marry next month. But you see, before we can marry, we need to test it to see if you are fertile. By the time we test it, <laughs> it was in Lagos, I learned a new rema. The rema I learned was that they said that marriage bed is honorable with the bed on the fire. Eh? Listen, oh. the rema was that a generation is now saying that what if we do it on the mat, not bed? You are changing menu. You are changing what? Pastor, what if we do it inside car? The, the Bible says it's bed. Okay, we don't want to do it in bed. You are what? Changing menu. Pastor, I have a question. He said, if I don't have sex with him, he will not marry me. What will I do? You are changing menu. You are changing menu. You are compromising. You are changing menu. The Bible says, but those that wait on the Lord, they shall what? Be strong. They shall mount their wings as eagles. You are waiting. It looks like you are foolish. But listen, strength is being built. You are not losing. Strength. And suddenly, you mount your wings as eagle, you begin to soar and you will not faint. Mm, true. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, verse 3, amplified version. He says, roll your walks upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to mm. him. Not in parts. Everything about your life. Commit and trust them to him. 
He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable, agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. So a waiter surrenders all, every step of the way, every step of the way to the Lord. Even his or her will, his ambition, his career, his standard, he submits all of it to the Lord and he will cause. So the first thing you need to do is to roll, is to surrender, is to trust, is to commit. It doesn't matter whether any other person around you is changing standard, but your business, your responsibility is to roll. One of the things I love about the word of God is that this, the truth is there are conditions to fulfilling covenant. Mm. There are conditions to fulfilling covenant. You know, the waiting season, is, it's a period, it's a process, a period between the spoken prophecy and the fulfillment of prophecy. True. So whilst prophecy can be spoken on the, over you, it takes responsibility. It takes your own part, in responsibility for you to play in going through the process to the fulfillment of prophecy. Mm. So waiting season is a period between a spoken prophecy and the fulfillment of prophecy. So what do you do in your waiting season? It's first of all, you need to roll your works. One of the conditions I find in the scripture is that you need to first of all trust, commit the entirety of everything that you will do, every Everything that you will ever do to him. And then he, the second thing that will happen is that he will then cause your thoughts to agree with his will. So, on, see, there's an alignment between you and his will. The next thing cannot happen. True. The first thing is to roll your works. The second thing that he by himself. So, I need to surrender for there to be an agreement between me and him. Mm. But it starts with the position of surrendering. True. So if I don't surrender, there's no agreement between myself and his will, between my thoughts and his will. So you need to first roll your works. And then the second thing, he will not cause. You see, the reason why you're trying to walk, you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm not supposed to go here. And then you're like, oh, you're trying to change standard. Today you are like this, just like the guy this way when he was acting. Today you are, you are trying to also what you cannot do. Because values are from God, and it takes God to fulfill values of God. Mm. Values are from God. So if you have to fulfill the values of godliness, if you have to fulfill godly values, then you must roll your weakness to God. Yes. The reason why you keep on changing standard, the reason why you keep on changing menu is that you have not rolled your weakness. You are trying to be, your, you are trying to be strong whereas you are weak. You are trying to depend on your strength for the values, for the, for the system of God. And it can't work. So you, 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 you have to be with God to be able to live godliness. So if I am not with God, I can't. There's nothing. So the reason why you struggle with his will is that you have to roll your thoughts. You have to roll your works upon him first. And then he by himself is not of you. It's not by you. It's not by your strength. He by himself will cause your thoughts to become agreeable with his will. And then the last thing will now happen. He says, and so shall your plans be established, and then you will succeed. So the third thing cannot happen until the other first two happens. The first thing is for you to roll. Then he will cause. There has to be an agreement between you and God for plans to be established. But the truth is, many times we are trying to force something. We have become too emotional rather than spiritual. Mm. There are two kinds of creatures, emotional and spiritual people. Mm. So most times, the reason why we fall for pressure is that we use our emotions to define life. True. We use our emotions to define, to live life. And life is a battlefield. You cannot afford to live this life without God. You can't afford to live this life without being baked in the spirit realm. It's not possible to live this life without having him become your maker. It's not enough to confess, enough to work out your relationship. So just in case I just say, oh, I love you, honey. I love you, my darling, sweet. It's not enough. Mm. Just because I say it in words doesn't mean there's an action executed. True. So there has to be an intentional. It is me surrendering to him while he surrenders to God. Yeah. So I am submitting to him. I am, I, I am marrying him. I'm, I'm, I'm putting everything, transparency to him. And then there can now be agreement. So agreement doesn't happen until there's a surrendering. So the reason most times we change our menu the reason why we change our standard, the reason why you want to do things your own way is because you are trying to struggle. You are trying to use the strength that you don't have instead of you depending on him totally. Waiters don't change their menu. Improve. When, 
in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says to 12, it says, trust hmm. God from the, from the bottom, bottom of your, your heart. heart. Don't try like to, to figure, figure out, out everything on your, your own. own. The message translation. He said, listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go is the one who will keep you on track. Mm. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Mm. You hear that? Mm. Many years ago, we were so broke. Mm. So broke. Many of the instructions that God gave us, it is now, I can tell you the things God told us. As at that time, we couldn't see it. Because if I had told you, then you say I'm foolish. So we started pastoring in the ministry. Where we're not staff in the ministry. We're just pastoring in the ministry. And God told us to go full time. Not to be a staff in the ministry. He said, both of you, go full time. I want to use you for my kingdom. So our business, we carried our business and handed it over to our PA to be helping us to be managing. In short, God helped him to kill it the more so nothing will come out. It was the driest period of our life. The stipend I was receiving from the ministry was 5,000 naira in a month as a man of God. The ministry needed help, so there's a way your member will complain. Even the 5K We couldn't tell people that we are full-timers. It doesn't make sense. We kept it because this was what God told us. We now entered into a realm. You know, many times we were so excited. Ah, I have the call of God. La, God, use me. Use me. You now start singing, spend my life. Spend my life. I win the nation for you. You don't know that you are implicating yourself. <laughs> Reason where before you sing song, go, spend my life. God, 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 tell Angel, Angel, that guy, let's spend his life. So when you come, when God starts spending your life, <laughs> we became a victim of that when God decided to spend our life. He said, we heard you when you pray, you and your wife. You said, you want to be global. Let me start. He started spending it. We now gave birth to our daughter. We couldn't pay us. Church members, they were not. We couldn't pay hospital B. They locked us in the hospital. My pastor is here. He was the one that came to bail us. I, I called him on phone that time. My daughter, I mother, you know. I called him on phone. Ah, how much is the... I said, 70,000. Hey! What are we going to do? What? Your church will call cat? I say, my church? Church will happy. <laughs> he came and he bade us out of it. The one day a young boy came to church who had gone to put his hand in Yahoo. So he had an attack from the Yahoo store. So he would just, as I'm talking to him, hey, leave me alone. I will not give you the money. Give me alone. I said, come to my house. I'm used to all those guys. I said, we will deliver you straight up. After I finished praying for the boy, the boy was delivered but refused to change. Uh -huh. So he said, ah, pastor, you know, there are pastors that used to pray for me in town. You are now in the list. I appreciate that. Pastor, you see, I have this 8 million naira in my account. I want to sow to you. That is the kind of money you will collect after you buy a car. You put it on Facebook. What God cannot do does not exist. <laughs> Eight million naira then for a man who had called his friend. I did tell my wife, I said, see, I'm so broke, I can't pay rent. I'm thinking of relocating to my mother's house to go and stay with my mother. Because I can't continue like this. And 8 million naira from nowhere. It just me and him having this conversation. He said, I can wipe it to you. Wipe it. Those that wait on the Lord. 
If you are not seeing something about Christ, you will not be able to wait to. Am I talking to somebody? If you are not seeing the finished works of Christ on the cross, you will not be able to wait in this work. True. Apostle Paul said, I, a prisoner of God. What it means is that this Christian work I'm working, I have decided to be a slave. Hmm. Whatever thing that comes that seems like a blessing that is not of God, is no to it. And I told the guy, no. And the guy, in this beginning, when men of God, we gather boys, I say, be pressing it. I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you. I will buy your laptop. Be pressing it. They will not buy JK and be. And you say, no. Then why we're in that suffering? Another guy came and said, Willows, I see you guys. You guys are so creative. You guys are too good. You're too good to be Christian. This international offer. He said, I have sponsored comedians in South Africa. He said, let's meet in Ethiopia. Let's strike a deal. You guys are too good. You guys are wasting. I told the man, he's from Zambia, one of these African countries. I said, go and watch our videos where again. You know the meaning of that. So he went and he watched it very well. He now sent a mail and said, ah, you guys are good. But anytime you are ready, let me know. I'll be ready for both of you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was about nine years ago. Till now, we are not ready. We are not ready. We went through that pain. Myself, I'm a, this beautiful woman. I used to love her. Our loco became a second nature. And my church, I was pastoring that I was close to the market. I asked for a loco. Even today, I'm trusting God. To... <laughs> See, listen. Those of you that are poor now, don't master poverty. Oh, so that when God changes your level, you will not be... By the rivers of Babylon. You start thinking of your past. No. <laughs> Amen. We saw it raw. What has been presented to you that is making you change your menu? I forgot this testimony I'm telling you. When I remember, it was two years ago when we were in the U.S. The moment we landed the U.S., people, you sure? One man, first of all, said, this is my credit card. Take it. Spend. <laughs> he said, spend. I said, I want to, sir, I don't know. I wanted to buy. He said, don't ask me. Spend. As a pastor, I use shoe. Shoe. I, oh, God. I can picture that shoe. I use that shoe for the work of the ministry. The shoe was begging, help me. On Sunday, I want to wear that shoe. I'll be having a conversation with the shoe. I say, my brother, it is well with you. I know what you are going through. This will pass one day. And I'll wear the shoe and move. The day my church look at me, they pity me as a pastor. Say, ah, pastor, this shoe, this shoe needs deliverance. Pastor, ah, you told us to be good, but you are wicked to this shoe. They now gathered money and they bought me shoe, 10,000 naira. I said, 10,000 naira shoe? This was a shoe I used for my wedding, 2,000 naira that I've been using. I bought it from UPN in Wibaro. You bought me 10,000 naira shoe. I said, we are, Mike, don't have battery. You are buying me shoe. We don't have speaker. You are buying me shoe. See where passion is going to. It was a person that visited church and he prayed for us. I didn't tell him our story. He said, you have spent for the kingdom. He said, God said, I should tell you, I want to spend on you. He said, I 
said you have wasted for the kingdom. God says, I want to waste on you. When the door opened, they took me to a shopping mall. Somebody in US, he said, pick shoe. I started picking, picking. He said, don't fall, pick shoe. My wife was not there. I will pick you. I will go to a corner. I will cry. I will shed tears. They say, what are you doing? I say, no, I'm, I'm coming. I will clean my eyes. I will go back. I'll go and pick you. I'll say, is it me that is picking you? Different states in the U.S., they were calling us. They called us. Maryland, Washington, D.C. All these places were going to, they were spending on us. I will enter the hotel room. I'll say, is it me that is staying in a skyscraper? Me, Uselu boy. I will enter the toilet and lock myself. I will cry. A waiter, don't change menu for anything. Those that wait on God. It shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings like eagles. They will soar and they will not faint. Who are you waiting for? Who are you waiting on? Is it God? Or you are going through the shortcut? They say, this is what is raining. Let us go through there. Or you are waiting on God. Let's run. Sometimes just because it's good doesn't mean it's God. So you can see good doesn't mean there is God in it. But when it's God, there is surely goodness. Mm. You need to differentiate it so we can have an understanding. Mm. Number what? Number two. Number, Number two, two, right? Yeah. Men. Men who wait on God don't have direction. Men who wait on God. Men who wait on God don't have direction. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8, New King James Version. If you have direction concerning your destiny, you are not waiting on. You know your road. Men who wait on God, they don't have direction. Hmm. New King James, let me New King James please. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Waiters don't have direction. God say, Mary. You are trying to help God. You are calculating. You say, God, I told you that he must have NSC. You have direction. You will not see God. And he went out. He just, God said, go, I'm giving you. No, let's be, let's be real now. God woke you in the morning and said, leave Benin. Go in a direction that I will show you. You just woke up. You went to a Yare Park. I started. Lagos, Lagos, Lagos. Where are you going to? Anywhere. Where is your direction? Nowhere. Who are you following? God. And he went. He was moving foolishly. Everywhere. See, if men don't call you a fool, they are not yet waiting on God. True, true, true. When they see how they live your, they, you, they see how they live your life. It doesn't make sense. Mm. They're not yet waiting on God. I remember when I wanted to marry my wife under my broke condition, broke. They call me church rat in church that time. Church rat. I'm telling you, people hardly hug me because they're still saying you follow that the anointing by the oozing that comes from my body. It's natural. And I went to meet my wife. I said, I want to marry you. This damn sir, under three days, said yes. I don't know what she saw. That she told, I, I, I said my only property was a laptop. 
I did have a house. I was quoting my mother's house. I did have a house. She said, yes. I said, I'll marry you in one year. A pastor called her. I said, sit down. <laughs> we have been in ministry for long to understand certain things. You see, oh, he's, I know him very well. He doesn't have direction. He doesn't know where he's going to. He doesn't have a future. Did you see those young men in church? You should have come for them. Is he who oh, he is that you want to marry? She came to meet me and she said, look at what this pastor said. He said, I said, what did the pastor say? He said, he said, oh, he doesn't have a direction. I said, he's right. Do I have direction? He said, oh, he doesn't have a future. I said, he's right. Do I have future? He said, oh, he doesn't know where he's going to. I said, he's right. I don't know where I go. I'm going to. I said, but sweetheart, I'm not bitter about him. But follow me as I follow Christ. He is my direction. He was the one that told me to go along that road. And it is him I follow. I am foolishly following him. But you look at me and say, this one is a fool. I'm telling you, if senior prophets may not be able to discern the call of God on your life, it's not because they are bad people. It's because sometimes God needs to hide some things. <laughs> Concerning your life, he will just, he will hide it. He will hide it. He will hide it. He will just, he will put it in obscurity. And when people see this, ah, this one, ah, not this one. is he not a fool? This one, ah, he doesn't have sense. He doesn't have sense. He doesn't have sense. They are pity you. When you don't have the same spirit like this woman. Because every other girl that came around, they said, ah, it's nothing. One met me years after I said, hey, look at you. You could not even pursue me further. How will I pursue you further? I try now. May God open your eyes for discernment. This is not about relationship alone. God can call you into an assignment. If you can't discern, if you use calculation, you will miss it. I'm telling you, true. When God called us to go pastor in a church, the redeemed Christian church of God that time, the church was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. We were there. You say, praise the Lord, it will echo and echo, echo. few people. I was managing to keep the 20. Inside the 20, many has left. A pastor called me and said, Who is? How many cars park at the outside of the church? I said, None. It's only one guy that comes with bicycle. He said, He said, What is their tithe, the total tithe of the church? I said, Yes, sir. They'd be like 9 5. He looked at me and said, Hey! It is well with you. I knew I was dead. I knew I was dead. But man, we look from the natural, but it is God that sees the heart. If you use calculation to follow God, you will miss it. But those that wait on the Lord, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. You see, um, my, not, my not delaying in responding to him, and he had to take three days. You know, listening to these, they're like, ah, just three days. I didn't have to spend time delaying and responding because you see, when you stay on him, you know his voice on time. Many times, some persons say, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Two years I've gone. It's actually not because they are actually waiting for a response from God. They don't actually know his voice. God. He doesn't really spend so long to talk. Ah. You see, you, we make mistakes. Many a times, my generation makes a lot of mistakes. When they have to wait on who they want to marry before they begin to hear the voice of God. It doesn't work that way. 
Have you heard him before you chose the course you had to study in school? Have you heard him? Did you hear him? Do you get to hear him when you have to board a keke to your friends as I say, not now, don't go? Mm. Do you hear him when you have to go for that job appointment? Because this is about directionless. And then he tells you, don't go, because that's not the route. It might pay you big, but that is not where I'm taking you to. God. So you see, many times, we want to get used to a voice we have not gotten used to. We want to get used to a voice where we want something really desperate. And so you think you're hearing a voice, but you're hearing your voice, the voice of emotions, not God. the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so you get confused, because you see... We want to hear him at the period where hearing him can be difficult. <laughs> so he, I didn't have to waste time in responding to him because looking at everything physical about him, I would never have said yes to him because, come on, I'm not trying to, I know I'm fine. <laughs> Listen. I wasn't battling with my identity. Listen, when you stay in God, your identity is secured. Mm. So I wasn't having, I wasn't battling, I wasn't a, a desperate lady looking for a man. I had so many persons around me that fit the qualification physically. But you see, sometimes when God needs you to follow him, you know, when I, every time I go through the scripture, follow me, I'll make you, Matthew 4, verse 19. Yeah. I'm like, why is it that the sons of Zebedee, they were with their father, but they left their father and followed God? At once. At once. Because you see, when it comes to following, your biological relation is not necessary. Mm. Mm. If I needed to look at the physical measure with the class of people I had around me, with the class of friends, with my parents, who many times I have to say, are you possessed? Mm. I said, are you possessed is a question. But you see, you can be possessed. Depends on the kind of possession. Kaya. So I understood what I was possessed with. I knew mm. I wasn't under any demonic influence. Mm. You can be possessed by the Holy Ghost. Mm. So I knew at that time, he was my government, not my emotions. And so no wonder the sons of Zebedee followed. I said, how could they have dropped their occupation? How could they have dropped what they were used to? How could they have dropped their skills and followed him? Not understanding what being a fisher of men would look like. But they followed. I had dreams when I was single. Just like some of you here. I saw myself in dreams where I will be ministering. But I didn't know that it would take partnership. It would take my being directionless or choose a partner. Because sometimes the dimensions don't normally come out until there's a partnership. And so saying yes to him was quick because I understood his voice. I knew that he had to be my government to be able to be controlled by him. The Bible says, Psalm 23 verse 1, we recite it all the time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But listen, the Lord doesn't just become a shepherd when you are not a sheep. He doesn't. Until we switch from a recitation to a revelation, some scriptures will never be useful. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. Can I tell you something? It's an is there. So it has to be a present tense for you not to lack anything. Aya. It is my. It is not the pulpit revelation. It is a personal one. Kaya. Until it leaves the pulpit where it becomes personal to you. you it can't be useful. Mm. It doesn't make sense. I came from a funny background and the Lord had to use that scripture to deal with me. He says, until you come to a point where you become my sheep, you can't understand where I will take you to. I have said this thing many, many times. Many years ago, without having to know my husband, there was a pastor who came around to the auditorium where I was, my fellowship. And then he looked, he pointed, and I turned my back. I've said this many times. And then he said, you turning your back. And I looked at him. He said, God said, I should tell you that you'll be a global actress. As how? I hated acting. I was not even in theater art. I never studied theater. I studied biochemistry. Okay. 
Never did I join a drama department. I started acting in marriage. <laughs> and then God is telling me I'll become a global actress. As how? Mm. And I didn't know that in becoming his sheep, he would take me through the wilderness. Mm. He would take me through desert places. He will take me through a process so that there can be an alignment onto partnership with him. Yeah. There are times, sometimes you have struggled with some dimensions you should experience because you are having a direction. Mm. Until you get directionless, he can't be a shepherd. He can't be my shepherd. He can't be your shepherd. Until you become a sheep, my sheep will hear me. My sheep Stranger. will listen. My sheep will obey. So it doesn't just end in listening. Because you can listen and not obey. So it, it takes listening and obeying to become his sheep. Where he has to speak to you and you have to follow. And then they left the occupation. They left what they were used to. They left the familiar. Because familiarity does not command the supernatural realm. So sometimes you have to look, look, leave what you are used to and walk with him to the new grounds. He will take you to Abraham would have said no because you can't see the end he can just tell you go but you can't understand where he's taking I didn't understand what that prophecy meant sitting in the auditorium I did not understand what it, how it looked like and I did not try to understand it mm. because sometimes you put yourself in a place of confusion trying to understand it obedient people are waiters and obedience does not analyze. People, waiters don't analyze. When he says follow, you are not trying to calculate. You are not trying to say, ah, if I follow this way, you sure? If I follow, you just move, understanding that he's the government. Just like when there's a secular, they say everybody shut down. Like the like secular that came out yesterday, they say, they brought a bulletin, don't go, don't, don't be, there's coffee, right? So what happens? Everybody obeys. You don't understand how it will look like, you don't want to know, but you just obey. The same thing when it comes to the Holy Spirit. You simply obey and believe, trust Him to take you through and see the end of it. Finally, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9 to 10. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9 to 10. Please, ushers, um, let's try to avoid movement now, please. Let's try to avoid any form of movement, please. Please. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9 to 10. He said, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in the desert place and in the waste hallowing wilderness. He should have taken him out of the wilderness where he found him, right? But the Bible says he led him about no direction he led them about where is the direction I don't know follow me God if I must succeed in ministry I must go to Ephrod or Chiaro God say no follow me it is Lagos that is reigning God say for I must do online ministry God say follow me Leave your strategy and your motivation. God say what? Follow me. I went for a pastor's conference in Lagos. True life story. They were teaching us on how to assess the presence of God in a meeting. And the man who was preaching about having the presence of God told us clearly. You want to see God? There are some stage lights you need to buy. Stage lights. He said when it's praise and worship, just be throwing the blue color. Men... We are men of God. Though. They'll be throwing the blue color. Be the blue. Then when it is time for worship, just throw red. Red signifies the blood. So, when somebody closed his eyes, when the blood, the red, hits the face, you notice that they will start crying. I ask myself, what am I doing here? Where are those days where our father will cry for revival? That God was leading them about. No direction, no direction was leading them. 
all what they were doing, they were praying. People look at them, why are you praying? Go school! You are a fool! He was leading them about no direction. The best package and strategy we give to you is that it will appeal to emotion. It will not touch the spirit. True, true, true. You want to touch the spirit of men? You must be a man and a woman of prayer. You must understand the secret place. When somebody tells you, why do you have to, you pray too much, why do you have to pray? Jesus has paid the price. They want to condemn you to strategy. The only way is prayer. It is prayer, I know. The grace I have experienced in ministry was better than prayer. My pastor that I was praying with when I was a teenager is here. We were even talking about it. He organized a program, they call prayer party. We will pray from Friday to Sunday morning. We lock ourselves, we are praying. We'll go to redemption camp, walk around the camp. At a time, myself and my pastor here will pull our trousers, holy boxer. Oh God, oh God, oh God. When I began to see some grace in my life, I knew where it came from. Condemn yourself to prayer. I have seen people, they, they've tried to go and do skits. You can't do it in, in, in flesh. You will think. You think it's strategy? I'll package your wife myself and my wife will be acting. Now call yourself the, where are the willows? Call yourself the jolos. It will not work. Strategy will not work. Look at scripture. Somebody say, why are you praying? Ask them, why did Jesus pray? After such an announcement on his life. The Bible says, and God opened the heaven and announced him in public, not in private. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yea, ye him. After announcement, he went to 40 days and fasted. Small announcement that you have. Your neighbor don't know you. You have carried shoulder. You can't pray again. You're on Facebook. Correcting Oye Dikwa and Boye. Writing the errors that you know because you are not PhD. God has not announced you. He has not announced you. You can't pray again. You can't pray again. Why should we pray? Apostle Paul said, grow in this grace. See, in this spirit world, there is rank. Don't let anybody deceive you. We can be equal in our salvation experience. But you see, power experience, we are not made to rank this thing. It is men of prayer. You want to rise above a level. God wants to see how much you seek that presence. How much you seek it. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. The Bible says, Jesus, after he has been announced, announced publicly is the way they ask you why are you praying ask them why did jesus pray after his father announced him why was he still praying why was he praying the bible says he prayed all night what was jesus looking for the son of god he knew that this race my life my life is sustained by prayers Show me a general who made it in history that was not a man of prayer. Show me one. Be careful you listen to. They want to off your light. They tell you it's light, state light. Then you want to see the presence. Press smoke machine. Smoke machine. Don't say that's the Shakana glory. Oh no. We will pray until we see the Shakana glory. It is not in electronics. It is not in packaging. We will cry until we see God. Until God appears to me face to face. Face to face. I will pray. If Jesus prayed, I will pray. Even when he was going to cross, he went to get some money and he prayed. He began to pray. He began to pray. The 
that blood started dropping from his eyes he began to pray I will pray I will pray I will pray that is my life Jesus looked at it and he said man ought always to pray always always to pray let me hear you begin to pray let me hear you begin to pray we are men content to pray you want to carry this prayer if I were you, I will pray. I will touch God on this mountain. I will touch God on this mountain. Let me hear you begin to pray. That is the only thing we know. That is the only thing we know. We are warriors. We are warriors. We are warriors. We are warriors. It is a warrior generation. We want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you, Holy God. We want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you. Ayo, 
It's a sign that thought God is restoring gifts now. Now, 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 now. 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 It will come like a touch now. There's a restoration. The power of God will touch you now. Your hands, your hands. There are 12 of you now. 12. That's one over there. The power of God will begin to touch you now. It will begin to touch you now. It is a touch. It is a touch. It is a restoration. It's coming strong. It's coming strong. It's coming strong. It's coming strong. It's an anointing. It's an anointing for a new beginning. It's an anointing for a fresh start. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming like a shout on someone. Like a shout, like a shout. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The gallery everywhere, overflow, everywhere. The power of God is moving. He's restoring gift to men. It's coming strong. Let the whole Lizo, badi ya da 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 ba da, shato prada da 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 da. Rapeto subante, eti ato laika, esko bai, eri ato, eri ato, eko bande bende 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 kabaisha, esko bande. In Jesus name, hey, in Jesus name, in Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Father, that lady you said you want to touch her mouth. You want to make her a Deborah. A Deborah. A Deborah. Touch her now. 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 That one. That one. That one. He. Touch that one now. Touch her. Touch her. It's a fire. It's coming on you. It's a fire. It's a fire. Is a crown. It's coming on you. It's coming on you. Over there. Over there. Over there. It's coming on you. Over there. Over there. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Silence everywhere. Silence everywhere. <laughs> Silence everywhere. Silence. No movement, please. No movement, please. Let's respect this atmosphere. No movement, please. The angel of the Lord is everywhere doing his work. Silent, 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 silent. Silent. Lift up your hands, everyone. And please be silent. Just the strings be silent. 
Oh, oh, oh. I, I see God equipping men with tools. I see one in the gallery right now. I see men equipped with tools for the next level. And it's coming on you strong. Right now, you will begin to feel the anointing around your belly. He said, I want to equip you with tools for the next level. The awe is coming on you very strong. I see, I see God equipping men with tools for the next level. Oh, the anointing is strong. It's coming on you. I still see someone in the gallery. You, for a long time, have refused to take it up. But he said I should tell you, you have been appointed for this race. You are a voice in this generation. I am anointing you with a tool for the next level. Ah, 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 Oh. There's someone I see towards my right. I see the Holy Ghost awakening your dry altar. Oh, oh, I see an anointing on your head and he's bringing you back to the altar of prayer. It's to the right, to my right hand side, to my right hand side. Oh, 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 it's coming on you. It's so strong. Everyone be silent, just be silent, silent, silence, silent, 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 silence, silent, silence. Silence. I am in my spirit. This is for a minister of God, yeah. He said, I should tell you, don't give up. I want to restore unto you those wasted years. It's coming on you strong. I have heard your cry. And I'm releasing unto you this moment my mercy. It is my mercy. My mercy that brings a man from the back to the front. He says, I should tell you, the ways that yes are over. Oh, they have mocked you, but I am restoring again. And it's all going to be brand new. La, sa, 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 si. Oh, oh. I just saw towards my left, someone just got healed. Oh, the healing power is here right now. I feel it so strong. I feel it so strong. I feel it so strong. And at this moment, I need you to touch that spot right now. I see a replacement of cell. Holy Ghost. I see a replacement of cell to my left, to my left hand side. Oh, he says I should tell someone. I, I just saw a picture of a queue of men. It's for somebody here. Yeah? He said, I am sending men to your way. Oh, oh, 
Yes, and I see it in line with someone's business. I see a rush. Oh, oh, I, I see a long queue of men coming for you. It says, I, it, is, it is my help. It is my help. And, and one of the ways you will feel it right now, you will begin to feel it on your feet. Now, now. Ah, ah. And, 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 I, and I see, I see him giving you a kind of wing to fly. Oh, I see the angel of God standing beside that person right now. Oh, Holy Ghost, 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 Holy Ghost. Ah, you feel it so hot right now on your leg. Ah, it's a fresh anointing. It is a fresh anointing. I am commanding the help of men your way. I am commanding the help of men your way. Please, can everyone be silent? Uh, I, I, I just saw right now, God just put a pillar by the side of someone. I, I just saw a pillar right now. I saw a pillar, a pillar by the side of that person. I just saw, and, and, and something, you, you just felt something in your hand. And it's very hot right now. It is the power of the Holy Ghost hitting you right now. Oh, 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 I see a pillar. I see a pillar. Oh, 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 oh. I, I just saw on a woman here, I saw a new crown being placed on your head. Yes, I, I just saw a new crown on your head, a new crown on your head. And, and one of the things that you will see right now it's there is gonna be a burning sensation that's how the anointing will start it will hit around the loins of your belly and there will be a strong touch on your head you can't resist it it is a new crowning of his glory oh a new crown of his glory a new crown of his glory oh oh he says, this present day shall exceed your former. Can't you see? Watch. I am beginning to do a new thing in your life that men will see. Can everyone just speak in tongues? There's something I see now. Please, please, just the tongues, just the tongues, just the tongues. Lift up your hands, everyone. Just speak in tongues and few seconds. Listen. Just be silent, please be silent. Oh, his breeze is blowing heavily. Ah, the wind of God is blowing so mightily. And I see him dropping mantles right now. I see mantles. I see mantles being dropped right now. I see mantles, 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 mantles. Oh, 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 oh. Can you receive this mantle? You cannot run away from it. 
It is the mantle from the Most High. Mantles, mantles. There is an ordination taking place right now. Ordination, 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 ordination. The Lord is ordaining men, ordination. Oh, 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 shalabamba in the kapala kosa. I feel it this way. Ordination, ordination, ordination. Make sure you're not a spectator. Make sure you're tuned. Something is happening in this atmosphere. Make sure you don't leave the same way you come. The angel of the Lord, the angels of the Lord, however, is dropping on some persons at this gallery right now to my front where my hand is stretched. I see mantles. Oh, there's someone online receiving it right now. Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. I feel your ordination. Ordination, ordination, ordination. It is an ordination. Ordination. Oh, 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 oh. It's coming on someone. It's coming on someone again. And you feel like running. It is an ordination. I see God dropping oil from a jug right now on you. It is an ordination. Oh, some papa pepe pende la batembo sa neka papa papa bosuria kataya. Oh, oh, oh. Someone. Listen, listen. I just saw a priesthood ordination. 